Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And this one is in honor of my viewers in the northeastern United States who are already getting a ton of snow. So I'm going to pile a little bit right on top of it, because this time we are looking at the 1985 G.I. Joe Snowcat. I have to give a special thanks to one of my viewers, Keith Birdo, for helping me complete this uh, to get it ready for review, so thank you very much, sir. And unlike most of my reviews, I have the box that the Snowcat came in. I don't normally like to get these retail boxes because I don't like to pay extra for cardboard, but I got a really good deal on this one, so in this review, we're going to look at the original box that the Snowcat came in when it was on retail shelves in 1985. Just a side note, in the city where I live, yesterday it was 70 degrees and sunny. This is the G.I. Joe Snowcat. It was first introduced in 1985. It was also sold in 1986. It was discontinued in 1987. And we didn't really get another G.I. Joe Arctic vehicle in 1987. But we did get a Cobra Arctic vehicle, the Cobra Wolf. The Snowcat was worth three flag points, and the flag points were printed on the back of the box. And you could redeem the flag points for special offers. There are the flag points right there. The Snowcat came with an action figure, Frost. Bite, and I'm going to take a closer look at Frostbite in a little bit, so I'm going to set him aside for now. There were some other versions of the Snowcat, such as the Tiger Force Tiger Cat in 1988, uh, but there were also some versions of this vehicle that came out after the vintage line. In 2014, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club um, essentially released the same vehicle, but in green instead of white, and it was rechristened the Havoc Mark II. There isn't a precise real-world vehicle that the Snowcat was based on. However, the U.S. Army did use half-track vehicles like this, and probably the closest real-world vehicle was the M3 half-track. Uh, that was in use for a really long time, but the Snowcat is quite a bit different from that classic half-track Army vehicle. Let's look at the parts and the features of the Snowcat, starting at the front, and we have this uh, snowplow front apron, uh, and I guess this is supposed to push snow out of the way. I think this would make a lot more sense if it were angled so that it would push the snow outside of uh, the wheels but it's just flat there and I think the result would be it would just push a wall of snow in front of it. I'm not sure that really helps you very well as far as uh, a snow plow. It has some headlights that's clear plastic uh, and here on the canopy it has this movable windshield wiper and this is a frequently missing part. It does not peg in there permanently. It can pop out and so you see a lot of these snow cats missing the windshield wiper. The canopy itself is frosted, but it has this clear area where the windshield wiper goes. So, I mean, it does look like the windshield wiper is cleaning off the ice from the windshield. And the canopy, of course, that lifts up to reveal the cockpit and some nice cockpit de detail. Inside the cockpit, we have the steering wheel. And the steering wheel is on a hinge that tilts, and that facilitates getting the action figure in and out of the vehicle. Uh, it also comes out very easily, so this is another frequently missing part. There is some very impressive detail on the inside. In the seats, uh, in the center console, there's a gear shifter. Uh, looks like there's a, a lot of buttons and switches. Um, nice detail, even a texture pattern on the floorboard. There's not a lot of detail on the front dash, but there is this sticker right here that says thermal gloves. I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a glove compartment right in there that with the sticker on it. I, I just thought that was kind of a nice touch. Behind the cab we have these floodlights and that's another clear plastic piece and I originally thought these were like emergency lights kind of like on a police car but these are supposed to be floodlights. On both sides of the vehicle we have these small steps and they have foot pegs and those foot pegs can be used to uh, have another action figure ride along on the side of the vehicle. This is a half-track vehicle, so in the front we have wheels, and these wheels are not connected with any kind of metal dowel or anything like that, like the Vamp, uh, so they both move independently. And they're really good-looking wheels, uh, but they are plastic. They are not rubber. To me, they kind of look like they ought to be rubber wheels. Um, they just sort of have that look and that vibe to them, but they are hard plastic. Above the step, we have the G.I. Joe logo and a Snowcat insignia, and this is pretty vicious 
looking. It's a white cat with a tongue sticking out and blood dripping off of it. It's got red eyes. That's pretty terrifying looking. In the back we have these treads and these are fake treads. They are not real. They don't really move. They're just solid pieces of plastic. Uh, mobility in the back end is facilitated by these wheels. Uh, the vehicle actually rolls on the wheels. In the bed of the snowcat, under the missile box, we have an engine cover, and it has a tab that makes it easier to pull it out because it is kind of sitting down there pretty far. So uh, some nice, excellent detail on the engine cover and some not too bad detail on the engine down in there. The engine detail is hard to see because it is really deep in there. It's way down there in the bottom. On either side, we have these avalanche ski missiles and they fit on this universal dumbbell peg here like most G.I. Joe missiles do. Um, and this is a really unusual weapon. Uh, it's a missile and it's on a ski. The ski missile is two parts and it does come apart pretty easily. Uh, I guess the ski missile is supposed to skim along the snow on the ski propelled by the missile's rocket engine. Uh, and it is very creative, a uh, very unique weapon. But honestly, I'm not sure why you would really want this thing. Uh, no matter how much I think about it, I can't see any reason why this ski missile would be in any way superior to a regular missile. Essentially, anything this ski missile could do, a regular missile could do better. I suppose one possible advantage is by skimming along the surface, it could go beneath any countermeasures, but it would also be vulnerable to any obstacles between uh, the snowcat and its target, so I don't think that's necessarily necessarily an advantage. So, you know, a nice idea, but really, if for practical reasons, a regular missile would do just as well as this thing. When the ski missile is removed from the side of the snowcat, it reveals two more foot pegs on either side. So that's three figures you can carry on the side of this vehicle. That brings us to the main weapon on the snowcat, this missile box, which carries four missiles. And it does turn all the way around, and it elevates. And one thing that you really have to be cautious about uh, is this clip that holds it, the missile box onto the turret. Um, it's all, the whole thing is held together with these clips, and these clips are extremely weak. They break very frequently, so be extremely cautious with that. This really is, I think, a design flaw. It seems like they were trying to uh, make this thing using the least amount of plastic uh, possible. I mean, the missile box itself, it doesn't have like a bottom to it. Um, it's like half a box and the missiles just kind of slot in there but this these clips really are very weak so be very careful with that the yellow missiles hold into the missile box through these slots here the fins of the missiles just kind of slide in there and that's how they stay in there are four of these missiles they are identical and the blueprints call them shockwave electronic he 27 250 pound missiles finally we get to the back end and in the back end we have more foot pegs on these troop carrying platforms unfortunately one of them is broken off on mine uh, but there should be two foot pegs like this one here on the back and a rail for the troops to hold on to uh, as they're being transported by the snowcat. In the back we have a universal tow hook so you can tow something like the 1984 G.I. Joe Whirlwind if you're so inclined. Now let's look at the box and this is kind of special. I don't normally get boxes so it's very rare that we have a chance to look at uh, the box that the toy originally came in. We get to see the artwork on the front of the box here and this is really nice. It makes it look very exciting for a kid. Uh, it makes you want to buy it. It shows some of the other G.I. Joe carrier characters riding along and of course that shows you how this vehicle can interact with other figures in your G.I. Joe collection. The action figure Frostbite would have been showing through this clear pane here. Uh, there's just styrofoam inside there right now just to help the box keep its shape. We have just a plain picture of the Snowcat toy on the bottom uh, and just the G.I. Joe logo and Snowcat on the top, a uh, plain black background. Um, 
Same image of the snowcat on the side. We have a price sticker here from Toys R Us. This was originally $9.97. On the back of the box is where all the action is. We get to see the actual toy, actual size shown, and the action figure. And this action figure uh, looks to be a hand-painted prototype. Uh, it is in many ways different from the uh, from the frostbite that we got um, the paint job is different the head is definitely different uh, just some minor differences but it gives us an idea at least of what frostbite supposed to look like here we've got a picture of the snowcat loaded up with action figures it says carries up to 10 gi joe figures on all those foot pegs and of course two on the uh, inside of the snowcat we've got our flag points and here we have the file card for frostbite and when i look at uh, frostbite's file card i will be looking at the one that's still on the box this is a good time to look at frostbite and frostbite added to gi joe's roster of arctic troopers which of course began with snow job in 1983. There was another Arctic Trooper, Iceberg, but I don't have that action figure to show you. Let's take a look at Frostbite's accessory. He came with only one. His M16 with a scope, a really big scope. This is where I have to give a shout out to Keith Birdo for sending me this accessory. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, this is the last part that I needed to complete the Snowcat and Frostbite, and since I had a completed item, I went ahead and moved it to the top of the list of toys to be reviewed so thanks again Keith and uh, that's just so awesome of you to send this to me the accessory itself is an excellent likeness of an M16 rifle and this very large scope it has up here is probably a starlight scope a starlight scope is an image intensifying scope it does not use uh, infrared light or anything like that uh, it essentially enhances the ambient light it's an early design for a night vision scope and as you can see it's very large the grip on this gun is a little bit thick and it stretches Frostbite's uh, hand when I put it in his hand and I do worry a little bit about breaking the thumb uh, although it, that doesn't seem to have been a danger at this point but I just like to be cautious. I don't think Frostbite necessarily needs this weapon uh, since he's a vehicle driver. Uh, some of the vehicle drivers for G.I. Joe came with some of the best uh, weapons but I really think they should have just left them as vehicle drivers and given these really awesome weapons to some other figures who might have needed it. For example, this weapon is very nicely paired with Stalker. In the G.I. Joe comic books, uh, Stalker was a Vietnam veteran, and when he was in Vietnam, he used a gun very much like this, an M16 with the Starlight Scope. Uh, his had a suppressor on it, but it was essentially the same weapon, and it would go perfectly with Stalker. In 2006, Hasbro came out with a comic three-pack that had a Vietnam version of Stalker, but he did not come with this accessory. I think that's a missed opportunity it would have been perfect to pair stalker with this gun look at that does that not look impressive Let's look at the articulation on Frostbite, and he had the typical articulation for 1985 G.I. Joe action figures. That means he could turn his head from left to right, but it could also look up and down. His neck was on a ball joint. His arm could swing up at the shoulder about so far. It could swivel all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow. He could move at the elbow about 90 degrees, and he had a swivel at the bicep. He could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring, so he could move at the torso a little bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of Frostbite, starting with his head. Uh, in his head, as you can see, um, he has sculpted on an expression. He's smiling. And uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I don't norm normally go in for these expressive uh, faces on the action figures. I tended to like a, a nice neutral expression, and as a kid, I would just pretend that the figure was uh, expressing any emotion that I wanted him to. But here, he he is frozen in this smile, uh, so even if he's being uh, shot at by Cobra or he's captured and being tortured, 
he's smiling all the time. I mentioned a problem with these expressive faces with Duke. As you can see, Duke is smiling as well, but uh, I don't have quite as much of a problem with it with Frostbite. His smile just seems very warm and friendly. He just seems like such a nice guy, and you know, you look at his smile there, and you th just say, hello there, Frostbite. Uh, nice to see you today. He has a black beard, black goggles, uh, and an off-white fur-lined cap. On his chest, he has a black a turtle neck undershirt uh, and a fur lined jacket with a black pistol holster that continues around to the back um, and he's got some pouches some pockets there on his right arm he has this unit patch which looks like a blue polar bear and there are some US Army units that use a polar bear for their unit patch but I haven't been able to find one that precisely matches this one uh, he has some pouches on his sleeves, some nicely detailed sleeves. There's some nice sculpted detail on his glove. As you can see, he's wearing mittens, but his trigger finger is separate, so he can still squeeze the trigger on his M16. His waist piece is fairly plain with a black belt that has a black pouch on one side, carries along to the back. Uh, and his legs are also very plain. He doesn't have any sculpted on weapons or anything like that. Um, and he has some pretty plain white boots. Let's take a look at the file card for Frostbite, and the file card was printed on the back of the box for the Snowcat. You can see it's still attached here, and we're just going to look at the file card still attached to the box. It has a portrait of Frostbite here. This is from the artwork on the front of the box. It has his faction as G.I. Joe. It says he's the Snowcat driver, codename Frostbite. File name Seward Farley S. Uh, primary military specialty, motor vehicle driver. Secondary military specialty, armor. His birthplace is Galena, Alaska. And his grade is E4. This top section says Frostbite was born in a place where summer is a myth and a crowd consists of two people standing on the same acre. He worked briefly as a lineman on a pipeline, but found the job unchallenging despite the 40 degree below zero temperatures and hazardous conditions. The Army promised him a challenge whenever he wanted one. Frostbite graduated from Transportation School Fort Eustis and Armor School Fort Knox. Qualified expert M16, M1911A1 auto pistol, M2 50 caliber MG, and M60 7.62 millimeter MG. This bottom section is a quote. It says, Frostbite has to be cool. The environment he works in is too unforgiving. If his snowcat throws a piston, he's got to get out into weather that'll freeze a hex wrench to bare skin in five seconds and carry through a repair job that would be taxing under ideal conditions. He can't afford to panic, not if he wants to stay alive. Alive. There's not really much to say about this file card except it depicts Frostbite as being ideal uh, as an Arctic Trooper. Looking at Frostbite overall, he is a nice update to the previous G.I. Joe Arctic Trooper, Snowjob. Uh, some nice use of color, um, and of course, Snowjob and Frostbite would work together. So, you know, we are uh, building on the squad of G.I. Joe Arctic Troopers. So now we've got uh, several troopers that can go into cold and environments and fight Cobra. The use of color is very interesting. The black definitely breaks up the white, so we don't have just a plain white action figure. Uh, we've got a little splash of blue here, and I think the off-white color on the uh, fur uh, jacket and hat uh, give it a nice subtle contrast. However, the bottom half is actually quite plain. Uh, there is no paint app on the legs, even on the boots. There's no sculpted weapon or anything like that, uh, and so the bottom half of this figure tends to look quite plain. Frostbite does have a smile on his face, and that does make him seem rather happy about everything, uh, and as I said before, I don't normally go in for this, but his, his smile is just so warm and friendly, it's hard for me to hate it. I do think that Duke's smile seems to be a bit more smirky and a bit more devious, but Frostbite's smile is just very warm and friendly. Hey, here comes Duke. I wonder what he's so happy about. Good morning, maggots. I just pissed in your coffee, and not one of you is man enough to do a goddamn thing about it. Have a nice day, maggots. <laughs>
Looking at the Snowcat overall, I really only have three knocks against it. First of all, it is very angular. It has no smooth lines or curves on it at all. Uh, it's just like all corners here. It's got a lot of sharp corners on it, and I suppose it might have seemed a little bit better if, if maybe we had had a little bit more of a streamlined design. Also, it doesn't have any anti-personnel weapon. There's no machine gun on this. Uh, you've got missiles. Uh, which could be used as maybe an anti-tank uh, missile or an anti-aircraft missile, but uh, not the kind of thing that you're going to shoot at an individual soldier with. So I think it could have used a machine gun on this somewhere. And finally, the ski missiles don't make a lot of sense to me, and when they're on the snowcat, they get in the way of the foot pegs. So the snowcat is more functional without the ski missiles. Those are all very minor criticisms because uh, this really is a very impressive vehicle. I mean, look at all of the detail on this. It's just amazing. It's got mega detail in almost every square inch of this thing. It even has detail in places that you wouldn't expect. I mean, you pop open the canopy here and you have this like uh, grill work and, and uh, these ridges here, uh, details on the inside. It's just like so much detail. I am amazed with this thing. Another great thing about the Snowcat is that even though it is uh, an arctic vehicle it doesn't have skis on the front like the uh, polar battle bear did so there's nothing about this vehicle that necessarily has to be an arctic vehicle so like when the gi joe collectors club uh, made it green uh, and made it like a, a jungle vehicle it made perfect sense uh, it still functions perfectly well uh, outside of an arctic environment with all the foot pegs it carries a ton of action figures but do be careful of the frequently lost and broken parts, especially the clip here on the missile box. That will break on you very easily. But as long as you're careful about that, uh, you've got a really nice vehicle here with the Snowcat. That was my review of the 1985 Snowcat and the driver Frostbite and the box that it came in. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you're thinking of getting a Snowcat and a Frostbite, I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot of great new GI Joe toy reviews coming your way. You don't want to miss them. And don't forget to like the Facebook page. You get a lot of updates there that you don't get anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with the next G.I. Joe toy review. The G.I. Joe Snowcat holds 10 Joes, and it's got a missile rack and torpedo skis. G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe, Snowcat, other Joe and Cobra figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro.